Hi everyone, welcome to Chelsea Fan TV for a new episode of Round the Corner. Chelsea hosts again in our first Conference League game. We qualified, we made it through, we beat Savet to get in. Conference League journey starts on Thursday night, guys. And we're in it to win it. I hope that's clear. We're all aware, of course. But it's an exciting new era. Chelsea in the Conference League. Forget Champions League. Forget Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. Football. That is what we want to do. That is what we want to see. So, yeah, we're excited. And I'm not even sarcastic when I say that. I think Conference League, yeah. Yeah, we're in it. We have a chance to be in Europe after, yeah, no European football. So anything is better than nothing. And uh, we're excited. We're going to welcome a new side, Gen, a Belgian side. I'm not going to pretend like I know very much about Gen, apart from the fact that they are a Belgian side. And uh, yeah, we're going to welcome a new team. I think the fact that, you know, we're welcoming these new fans from all around Europe and we're seeing new teams come to Stamford Bridge is quite good. It's quite exciting. It means you know, um, something new. Keep repeating that, but it is something new. But anyways, guys, we're going to get into the video, talk about the lineup, who we might see, feature, what the result could be, what I'm expecting. It's our third home game in a row, and uh, it's so far two out of two, which is fantastic. Hopefully we can continue that on, and uh, if we can keep a clean sheet too, that would be spectacular as well. Um, at the end of the week, we'll have Nottingham Forest to kind of round out this uh, four um, home game run in a row. So hopefully, again, it's a, it's a winning week ahead of us. Now, the fact that we can rotate heavily and then field out a new set of 11 players without taking out as much quality is so refreshing and something that Enzo Maresca has really smoothly done. So props to him for working that out. I think what we'll see is obviously um, Jorgensen come in for Sanchez as he has against Servet. I think he takes some credit for that as well because um, obviously we conceded away from home but at Stamford Bridge he looks pretty decent when we saw him there. Maybe he wasn't tested as much and I'm not too sure if Gent would be testing him either on Thursday night but it's a chance for him to showcase what he can do so we can get to know him a little bit better what his strengths and weaknesses are as a goalkeeper. Um, so really really intrigued by that. I think in terms of what we saw um, you know, kind of against Barrow, it won't be uh, too different. We saw a lot of changes, a pretty new squad, um, change of 11. So I think it's going to be uh, quite similar in that regard. In terms of right back, I would like to see Achenpong start. I don't really want to see the sassy there at right back. I like to think we all have enough quality still there to be able to, um, yeah, keep Gen out of our box. But I think he deserves to start. He obviously came on uh, a little bit for a little bit, but I'd much rather see him start. He's a young player. I'm intrigued to see um, what he's like. There's been a lot of praise around his name. So why not give him a chance, um, Enzo Maresca? We probably will see Baddy Ishil alongside Tozin in that back line as a centre-back duo. A lot of height in there, a lot of physicality, hopefully a lot of aerial dominance too. So yeah, I'm excited to see uh, that duo too. I said that I wouldn't perhaps like to see a completely new back line purely because defence is still one of those uh, weaknesses in our team where we are a little bit out of place sometimes at the back and I'm not too sure if I want to chop and change game in, game out. But having said that, that I think it is good to still give these players minutes just to see how they can do because if it comes to a situation where we have to kind of rotate that Colwell and uh, Fafana partnership which is very much kind of in the Premier League then we want to know what these players can do right so yeah give them a chance to start a left back I think we will see Vega again I talk about height I talk about dominance physicality another player that possesses that versatility as well you know you can drop into midfield I think he is as well another player that is slowly but surely gaining our trust a little bit has had some really good um you know appearances and uh some cameos so hopefully he can start and uh crack on with whatever he's got to show now kin and Dewsbury Hall and Zimmerisk has made it quite clear that he'll be featuring in these cup games and uh while he's not getting a look in in the prem he'll be able to um now in Europe in our domestic cup so I think Kin and Dewsbury Hall starts in midfield alongside uh Caicedo who probably reps the captain armband of course in Enzo Fernandez's absence so really nice to see him getting confidence with that too I think it's a big um call it's a really big kind of boost of confidence as a young player to be given the captain and armbands when you're like what two seasons into your um 
spell at Chelsea FC. So yeah, really happy for Caicedo. I don't think he had the best game against Brighton, but yeah, he can rectify that, get some more minutes under his belt, build his confidence. And again, that is a little bit more control in midfield because at the end of the day, we don't want to completely change and scrap everything, right? Uh, Lavia, we know, is not in the Conference League squad. So that's the only reason that I'm not considering him right now. Otherwise, for me, he would absolutely be playing uh, Lavia again. Very strong player who hopefully we can see more of this season, <laughs> God willing. Um, but yeah, guys, I think we'll see uh, a similar front four um, as we did last week. And that is obviously Joao Felix, uh, Mikhailo Mudrik, Pedro Neto and uh, Christopher Nkunku. Our hat-trick hero against uh, Barrow, who cool as a cucumber, doesn't play, doesn't start, comes in, there's no problems. Nkunku doesn't need to be consistently playing games to be the quality player he is. Now, some may argue, me, myself, that he deserves to be playing Premier League games, but... I'm not too worried if we've got a player that can be such an effective super sub, like a secret weapon almost, to come on and win you a game sometimes when you really need that substitute there. We've not always had that. So for me, it's much welcome. But to be able to give him minutes as well regularly, at least a game a week, is also really, really useful to him. And eventually, hopefully, we see him uh, kind of integrate himself in that um, in that squad and that's kind of A team, as we now like to say, because we've got an A team and a B team. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy for Christopher Nkunku because he is really proving um, how good of a player he is. He doesn't need many minutes to make an impact. He doesn't need much game time uh, to make an impact. So we saw that very good uh, partnership that he had with Joao Felix. Obviously, they combined for that first goal where Joao Felix just so beautifully kind of chipped it, scooped it over um, their defence and Nkunku finished it great. Um, Joao Felix is someone that, again is eager to get minutes he's eager to get himself um on the score sheet the free kick yeah I'll put that down to him <laughs> it, it was a known goal in the end but the fact that you know he was uh, so precise it was pinpointed so so beautifully the accuracy on that um the power the weight on the ball everything was really really good about that um if he can get himself some goals as well then wow guys we're looking at a really potent front line I said when I saw that front four you could easily swap an interchange with the starting lineup and someone said that you know the fact that we've got an A team and a B team and there's not much difference in quality up front is so powerful and we've seen that both sets of front threes fours if you like to include the 10 are very capable of scoring you goals um and they've not always come as a given so it's absolutely fantastic now Pedro Neto another player which I still think has got so much to show I think at times has been a little bit isolated in a few games because a lot of our when he plays on the left obviously we know that we're a very kind of dominant right hand side heavy obviously you know Cole Palmer um being involved a lot of our attack comes uh, from that right hand side so I think there's been many games where he's been a little bit isolated that's not not to say that he's not a good player or that he's being rubbish no absolutely not I think Pedro Neto does a lot of good things as well particularly off the ball he does sometimes drift centrally as well so he is that bit of a menace player that can cause defenders troubles because he's just kind of everywhere in in that box in that penalty area so if he can get another goal himself that would be fantastic he's always already scored his first so if he can continue that on then absolutely fantastic but you know Pedro Neto another player I was a bit like Ooh, when we first signed him because it just for me came out of the blue but yeah I'm really seeing the vision here so absolutely great now I've left Mikhailo Midrick as the player I'm going to talk about last purely because I have some things to say about Mikhailo Midrick now for those of you that have ever watched me or have watched my videos for maybe yeah a couple years or a year or whatever I've been Midrick's biggest advocate when he came in with Noni Madweke I said I see something in these two players they are special there is something there there's potential there give them time let them play you know a lot of our like managers weren't really starting them they were maybe substitutes sometimes and I said that's not how you're gonna you're gonna develop these players they need game time they need consistency now with Noni Madweke he eventually got some more kind of consistent runner games and he proved that he could actually improve every game he built on what he did the game before you know we've seen this season he's clinical up front as well last season he was able to kind of take on his man dribble to the end and then maybe not like have the finished product this year it's different and you can see that clear improvement with Mikhailo Mudrik there is still an element of he's hot and he's cold yeah when he came on and played um 
against Barrow, he was, I thought, okay, decent. But then again, it's like, when do we stop saying, oh, there's potential there and, um, oh, he was not that bad? Because this season, not being that bad is not the bar anymore. Maybe last season it was, the season before it was because of how bad things were. But now we've got so much quality. There are so many players that are really stepping up and taking responsibility that there is no room for he's not that bad or he was okay or there is something there and unfortunately you're gonna have to do a lot more than that to get your starting spot and I think for Mikhailo Midrick unfortunately there's no way uh, over the wingers we have he gets a look in, in in a starting lineup in the Premier League unfortunately it's great that Enzo Mariska still wants to give him minutes but I don't think Midrick's any longer kind of part of the long-term plans in terms of being a player that's built around and being a player that's going to be a regular starter because the fact that he's still inconsistent sometimes game in game out and even within games as well where he's got a good game but he still sometimes makes the wrong decisions makes me feel like Mikhailo Midrick is not ready for this level and sadly it's taken us a while to realize it because he is a player we root for you know I want Mikhailo Midrick to do well seriously I, of course there's a player there and I will always defend him in the fact that I think his career move to Chelsea was too soon too quick too soon too big of a leap for what he was ready for at the time and that's on recruitment that's on the club that's on whoever decided to um really give him that next step where you know he almost missed a whole staircase um to his um, next club so again that's not on the player I think if he had gone to another club um somewhere else developed there got regular game time and was given time to um and leeway to be hot and cold because you know it but now at Chelsea this season there is no leeway to be hot and cold everyone's got to pull their way everyone's got to meet the objectives and the goals that we need to this season get back into Champions League football win ourselves a trophy and uh yeah so that's it on Mikhailo Midrick but I'm happy that he gets some game time what else is there for him to really do we paid a lot of money for him so there is still a case there an argument to make that he should be getting some game time but that's just where I stand on Mikhailo Midrick and uh for all we know he could probably have the game of his life and uh and then everyone will flip it again and say oh look there's that player and that's always the problem because in the next game he plays it's like ah yeah I remember now but anyways, guys, that's the starting lineup I think Enzo Moresco will go for. Maybe I did combine a little bit with what I would like to see. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree, disagree with any of those decisions. What would you like to see? Let me know some score predictions as well, guys. And if you're not subscribed to Chelsea Fan TV, hit that subscribe button right now. Check out my personal channel as well, which will be linked uh, below Nina's Chelsea Corner. Remember to leave a like uh, on the video and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. We'll be there at Stamford Bridge. Thursday night. Come on, Chelsea.